Good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, teacher. Okay. Excellent. Everybody, welcome. All right, let's begin. I'm going to share the screen with you now. There it is. And uh, I'm going through, I'm going to go through the attendance list now. So when you hear your name, please let me know. <clears throat> let's begin. Abdi Avisua Peña López. Abdi Avisua Peña López. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher present. Good evening. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Present teacher. Welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Good evening teacher. Present. Welcome. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. I am here. Welcome. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. I'm here. Good evening. Good evening. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Present teacher. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. Gabriela Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. I'm here. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Good evening, present. Good evening. Jose Eraivin Enríquez. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Carla Stephanie Perla Umanzor. Present, teacher. Welcome. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Present, teacher. Welcome. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Present. Welcome. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present, teacher. Welcome. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present, teacher. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Good evening. Good evening. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Present teacher. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Welcome. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Debbie says, I'm here. Okay, Debbie. Mm, okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Let's begin. Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English 3. And this is me, Ivan Donyang, at your service once again in this is session number 10. Today is November the 14th of 2023. We have another chat entry, Cesar. Okay. Thank you, Cesar. All right. So, um, what are we going to do? We're going to, you know, have a review on the topic we studied yesterday. So take a look. It's present and real conditional with unless, if only, only if, and even if. So yesterday we said that this is a type of conditional sentence. Okay. Now conditional sentences have two clauses. There is the if clause or the condition clause, and then there is the result clause or the main clause. Okay. So what is that? In the if clause, you, for this kind of type of conditional, I'm sorry, you have to use uh, past simple. That's the way you have to use past simple. Okay, and the if clause can begin with if, can begin with unless, only if, and even if. Okay, 
in the main clause, you will have to use would and the verb in base form. If it is negative, you have to use wouldn't. So we have some examples. You have, I wouldn't tell the bank unless it were a large amount. I wouldn't tell the bank is the main clause. You use would and the verb in base form. And then you have the if clause, unless it were a large amount. You have to use unless, if, only if, or even if, right? And after that, you use the verb in past simple. In this case, this is the verb be. As we mentioned yesterday, in the case of the verb is special in this particular conditional form, because the grammatically correct form is always where and not was, but people use was a lot. Okay, people use it. Informally, you will hear it a lot, especially in spoken conversation. So just for you to know. Second example, I would keep it a secret unless my coworker continued lying about it. Okay, so we use unless clauses uh, to include exceptions that would change the speaker's decision. Then you have only if. Only if clauses stress the condition for the result. That means this will be the only condition. I will keep it a secret only if I liked my coworker. Okay, only if I liked my coworker. And then you have even if clauses are followed by unexpected results. Even if I were really broke, comma, I would return the extra money to the bank. Incluso si, right? Even if I were really broke, I would return the extra money to the bank. Now, something that we also mentioned yesterday is that you can begin your conditional sentence with the if clause and finish with the main clause. Or you can begin with the main clause and finish with the if clause. No problem. Except when you have only if. Okay. When you have only if, I don't recommend this. I don't recommend starting sentences with only if because you will have to do something extra, which is a totally different uh, grammar topic. Okay, that is called inversion after negative and limiting adverbials. But that's a different grammar topic. So this is why I don't recommend it. If you have to use only if, then my, my advice is at this point, begin with the main clause, okay? But in the other cases, you can choose. All right, you can begin with the main clause and then end with the uh, if clause, or you can begin with the if clause and finish the sentence with the main clause. It's up to you. We have another chat entry here. Yanira Mendoza. Okay, thank you, Ana Yanira. All right. Um, uh, Ms. Romero. Uh, yes. Could you get up an example um, of a phrase using only if at the beginning, please? Yeah, I can do that, but <laughs> I will get off topic, but I will. No, no problem. Okay. You can say, imagine, well, let's use the same sentence. I would keep it a, keep it a secret only if I liked my co-worker. Okay, as I said, right? I don't recommend starting with only if because you will have to make a change. If you started like that, and it requires some explanation, but this is only an example, only if I like my coworker, and then you don't say, I will keep it a secret. Instead, you will have to use the structure of a question and you have to say, would I keep it a secret? That will be the form. This is why I don't recommend it because then you will be using something that we call, or that is called, okay, inversion after negative and limiting adverbials, okay? And this is one example of them. It can be a little bit confusing. <laughs> That's why I don't recommend it. So again, if you have to use only if, I don't recommend using it at the beginning or you will have to do this process, okay? When you have only if, begin with the main clause. It's going to be much easier. Even the okay. book. <laughs> <laughs> even you. the you. You're welcome. Even the book doesn't, doesn't do it. 
if you notice in this case, right? So I will keep it a secret only if I like my coworker. <laughs> okay, so there is the knowledge check 3.2. Okay, we're going to do this one right here. This is not in the manual. It's only in the platform. That's why we're going to solve it together. So knowledge check, if you have done it, I hope you have. Number one, which sentences mean that Sam will go? So you have A, Sam would go if he was invited. B, Sam wouldn't go unless he was invited. Uh, Sam would go only if he was invited and Sam wouldn't go even if he was invited. So which ones indicate that Sam would go? It says will go, but it should be would go actually, okay? Who wants to try? Is it B, C, and D? Is it A, B, and C? Or A, B, and D? Which ones would indicate that Sam? Uh, it says that Sam will go, but it should be that Sam would go because we're talking about hypothetical situations, not uh, real situations. That will be the first conditional, but we're starting second conditional. So instead of will right here should be would. So question is, which sentences mean that Sam would go? A, Sam would go if he was invited. B, Sam wouldn't go unless he was invited. C, Sam would go only if he was invited. Or D, Sam wouldn't go even if he was invited. Boris Salinas. Okay, teacher. Uh, A, B, C. A, B, and C. All right, that is correct. Okay, Sam would go if he was invited, means that on the condition that he was invited, yeah, he would go. So yes, Sam wouldn't go. That means no, unless that introduces an exception, he was invited. That means that, yeah, he will be willing to go. And Sam would go only if he was invited. Okay, that means he will be willing to go in these specific conditions or uh yeah given these specific conditions so <clears throat> will be a b and c but what about letter d sam wouldn't go that means no even if he was invited so even if he received an invitation he will still say no no no, no i don't want to go okay so yeah it's a b and c thank you boris that is the correct answer what about number two which sentence means that Sam won't go? Okay, again, there's a mistake in here. Which sentence means that Sam wouldn't go? A, Sam would go if he was invited. B, Sam wouldn't go unless he was invited. C, Sam would go only if he was invited. Or D, Sam wouldn't go even if he was invited. Which one means that Sam wouldn't go? Biden. And then Maritza for the next exercise, I guess. Okay. Letter D, Sam okay. wouldn't go even if he was invited. Mm -hmm. Sam wouldn't go even if he was invited. So Sam no iría incluso si lo invitaran, o ni siquiera si lo invitaran, right? So that means no from him. He wouldn't go. So that is correct. Thank you, Byron. It's letter D. So that's knowledge check 3.2 for you. Okay, you will find it in the platform. Everybody, please solve the exercise. Let's continue. Now, this is some grammar extra that I'm going to share with you. Just let me. OK. So if you check what's up. It's right there. Okay, I just sent it to you so you can have it. So unreal, present unreal conditionals with unless, only if, and even if. So to ask. A follow-up question after a yes-no question, a shortened condition can be used, especially in spoken or informal English. The positive shortened conditional is if so, and the negative shortened conditional is if not. Okay, so what is this? You say if so means if you would, in other words, if your answer is yes, and then you have if not means 
if you wouldn't. That means if your answer is no. That's the meaning of that. Okay, so you have this. <clears throat> Would you consider lying to a good friend to avoid hurting your friend's feelings? If so, that means if your answer is yes, what kind of things would you lie about? Okay, that's the meaning of if so, if so, right? And it comes after yes, no questions only using the second conditional. So would you consider lying to a good friend to avoid hurting your friend's feelings? If so, that means if yes, if your answer is yes, what kind of things would you lie about? What about the other one? Are you sure your friends are loyal and trusting? If not, that means that's self-explanatory, right? If your answer is no, you shouldn't tell them your personal secrets, okay? <clears throat> that's how it is, right? Just remember, right? If so means if your answer is yes. If not means if your answer is not. Answer, by the way, spelling mistake. Okay, if your answer is no. So, well, I'm just going to take away this part if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't, because it is not necessary. I mean, it doesn't necessarily happen with conditional sentences. You can see it here in the second example is not a conditional sentence. So if so means if your answer is yes, if not means if your answer is no. I'll eliminate the parentheses too. All right, knowing this, I want you to take a look at this part. Match the yes, no questions on the left with the follow-up questions on the right, okay? And I'm going to give you two minutes for you to just match the sentences. Number one with, you have to choose the letter A, B, C, D, E, or F. So read the sentences. Okay, read the questions, actually, they're not sentences. Read the questions and I want you to read uh, the follow-up questions on the right and uh, I want you to match them. Okay, but be very careful because it's kind of easy to make mistakes in here. Okay, so be very careful. All right, um, two minutes, beginning right now. One minute.
All right, time is up. So number one, I need a volunteer. Would you say anything if a colleague called you by the wrong name? Volunteer. Number one, again, would you say anything if a colleague called you by the wrong name? Who wants to try it? Well, there's the answer then. There you go. There's C, E, A, B, F, and D. So would you say anything if a colleague call you by the wrong name, you have letter C? If so, what would you say? Number two, if the man next to you on the bus fell asleep on your shoulder, would you wake him? Letter E. If so, how would you wake him? Number three, would you remain silent if you disagreed with your boss in the meeting? Letter A, if not, what would you say? Four, would you report it if you saw a friend shoplifting a small item from a store? And you have letter B, if not, would you confront your friend? Number five, if someone you secretly disliked invited you to a party at her home, would you go? Goes with letter F. If not, what excuse would you give? And the last one, if a cat always came to your house for food, would you keep it? Letter D. If not, would you try to find its owner? Let us continue. Circle the correct answer to complete the sentence. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to give you, well, three minutes this time. Okay. I want you to go and choose the correct word to complete the sentences. So you have number one, I wouldn't lie to a friend. And then you have unless and only if, you have to choose only one, unless or only if. In this case, we have, I wouldn't lie to a friend unless it was in his best interest. If it was something convenient for him, something good for him. Okay, so I wouldn't lie to a friend unless it was in his best interest. So that's an example. I want you to do number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'm going to give you three minutes for this. I want you to choose the right word. Let's begin.
one minute. All right, time to check answers. Okay, I hope I can get some participation this time. Number two, if you found, well, I need a volunteer. Who wants to read this? Who wants to try number two? Please. Ms. Romero, thank you. Thank you for raising your hand also. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay. If you found money on the street, would you turn it? Would you turn it into the police? And I have. If not, what would you do with it? If not, what would you do with it? Okay, that is oops, that is correct. If not, what would you do with it? So, Miss Romero, if you found money on the street, would you turn it into the police? Will you, you know, report it to the police and give it to the police? Maybe because of, um, maybe if there was a large amount of money, mm -hmm. like 100,000. Like a hundred dollars, you, you would turn it into the police. Yeah. Okay. And if it, if it were like, say $20? No. Nah. You will keep it. <laughs> That's my <mine. laughs> I okay. found it. <laughs> okay, you found it. It's yours. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Romero. Number three. Number three. Who wants to try? Biden. Thank you. And then Maritza. Okay. Would you report a small theft? Even if the person looked poor. If not, would you tell the store manager or would you call the police? Okay, would you report the small theft uh, even if the person looked poor? Okay, so what is the next one, Byron? If not, would you tell the store manager or would you call the police? But if you tell the store, ma the store manager or you call the police, you are reporting it. If so, would you so, tell the store manager or would you call the police? That's right. If so, that means if your answer is yes, will you tell the store manager or would you call the police? Okay. So, Byron, this question is for you. Okay. Would you report the small theft <laughs> even if the person looked poor? Imagine a person looks like really poor, but it's like stealing from a store. Okay. So, if so, well, first, the first question, would you report that or would you uh, turn a, uh, a blind eye to it? That means like you, you will pretend you didn't for see me, anything for me if I call the the police you will call the police okay all right yeah. okay okay you, you believe in the justice system all right good number four thank you byron maritza isabel he wouldn't lose his temper even if he were really angry. Yeah, he wouldn't lose his temper even if he were really angry. Okay, no question for you here, Maritza. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, thank you very much. That's a correct answer. Number five, I need a volunteer, please. Let's participate. Practice your English. Who wants to try number five? Mm -hmm. Number five, number five, number five, number five. Alejandro Quintanilla, thank you. 
and welcome. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. No, I'm sorry. What's the meaning of gossip? To gossip is um okay. When a person gossips about you, that means that they are talking about you in secret. Usually not a good thing. Usually something bad. Or maybe not something bad, but maybe something private. Also, it doesn't necessarily have to be true. Sometimes people invent things, okay? And they talk about you behind your back. They are gossiping. Chambre. Yeah, totally. There's a series. I've never seen the series, but it's very famous. Gossip Girl. But I've never watched it. I have no idea what the series is about. But but I've heard it's a very famous series. Okay. So um, what about this one, Alejandro? Would you like to try number five? Yes, teacher. Would you okay. comfort a friend who goes gossip about you behind your back? If not, what would you say? But if you say something, you are confronting your friend. Yeah. So, if so, if so, uh -huh. if so, what would you say? Yeah, that's correct. Would you confront a friend who gossiped about you behind your back? If so, if your answer is yes, what would you say? Uh huh. Yes, that's correct. Uh huh. So, question, Alejandro, would you confront a friend who gossiped about you behind your back? No, teacher, I never confront a friend who gossip about okay. me. Okay. Yeah, no, no. All right. <laughs> so you value the friendship? No, necessarily. Not really. <laughs> it's, 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 um, how can I explain that? When you grow up, you uh -huh. understand that your time is, is the most value that you have in your life. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah. So we never can, uh -huh. resolve anything with comfort, confront uh, people. People okay, never so, never say, yes, I'm sorry, I I committed a error. I mistake. No. I made yeah. a mistake. Yes, I made a mistake. Yeah. So people you you would you you would that. consider you know confronting a person a waste of time. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. All right. Yes, maybe. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks for your participation. Number yeah. six. Who wants to try number six? Please, Jenny Elizabeth. Okay. I couldn't read anyone else's mail, even if I were really curious. I wouldn't read anyone else's email, even if I were really curious. Okay. okay. Yeah. I don't know about El Salvador, but I know that in other countries, like the United States, for example, reading someone else's email is a crime, actually. Really? So yes, uh huh. If you, for example, yeah, if you if you read a, another person's email, you're you're committing a crime. So <laughs> you're not supposed to do it. Okay, yeah. thank you, thank you, okay. Jenny. Uh, what about number seven? How about number seven? Number seven is probably the most complex, you know, of all the items in this list. So who wants to try? Don't be afraid. If you get the wrong answer, you know, the worst case scenario is I will give you the right answer <laughs> respectfully. So who wants to try? Number seven. Okay, Maritza and then Boris, you go with number eight. Uh, number seven. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can't, I can't see. Oh. <laughs> Would you make a promise? Okay. Would you make a promise if you already knew you couldn't keep it? If not, what would you do later, later when you didn't keep the promise? So would you make a promise if you already knew you couldn't keep it? Uh, and then you have, what would you do later when you didn't keep the promise? So in other words, 
things happened exactly as you imagine. What will be the correct alternative? Um, Is it if so or if not? If, if not. If not, that's what you told me first. <laughs> oh. Oh, if so. It's actually if so. So would you make a promise if you already knew you couldn't keep it? ¿Harías una promesa aunque ya supieras que no puedes cumplirla? Is that if so, what would you let what would you do later when you didn't keep the promise? Okay, si no, ¿qué haría después al no haber cumplido la promesa? Right? So it's if so. Okay. That's that's the one. Okay, well, uh thank you. A lot of people do this, okay, particularly when they're asking for money. Okay, people go up to you and they tell you like, hey, can you lend me $200? I promise, I promise, I'll pay you next month. I promise, I'll promise. And they know they are not able to do it. They know they will not do it. And then you believe them, you lend them the money. And then the next month they tell you, ah, sorry, man, I don't have the money. Uh, you will have to wait. Oh, come on. That happens. Okay, so what about number eight? Boris. Okay, my, it's my turn. Yes, your turn. Uh, uh, I could criticize uh, my friends unless I knew a way to help them improve. I will criticize my friends unless I knew um, a way to help them improve. But at the same time, well, I guess it, it, it kind of makes sense when you say it like that. But the answer right here is actually only if. I will criticize my friends. In other words, you will tell your friends like, no, listen, what you did is wrong or this is not right, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But only if I knew a way to help them improve, okay? Why don't you try okay. this, for example? Okay, it's a better idea. Or I recommend doing this other thing. So I will criticize my friends only if I knew a way to help them improve. But if I didn't know, if I just said like, okay, this doesn't work, but I don't know how to make it better, then I wouldn't criticize. Okay, you go like, because I don't have anything to, to add. So that's how it goes. Uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, Maritza and Boris also, thank you very much for your participation. That's uh, the exercise. Now we're going to, that's, that's Grammar Extra. This exercise is not in the platform, it's not in the manual either, so. This is some extra practice for you. Now, uh, we're going to do the listening activity, which is exercise 3.3, finders, keepers, okay? Finders, keepers. El que se lo encuentra, se lo queda. That's the meaning of that expression, okay? Finders, keepers, okay? It's very common among kids, by the way. You say, hey, that is mine. And the other kid says, no, finders, keepers, okay? I found it, I keep it. So listen to Aaron and Lane talking about finding something. Are these statements true or false? Or does the person not say, check the correct answer? So the first one is Aaron's son wanted to keep the wallet and spend the money. Is that true? Is that false? Or they didn't mention it. Number two, Aaron's son received a thank you card as a reward. Is it true, false, or it doesn't say? Number three, the owner of the book probably didn't care much about it. Is that true, false, or doesn't say? And number four, uh, Lean will probably return the book, true, false, or doesn't say. I'm going to play the track once. I want you to listen and take notes and check the right answers. Remember, it's true if it is directly stated. It is false if it is if it contradicts what they said or doesn't say if the information is not even mentioned. Okay, you don't know because it doesn't say. So I'm going to play the track. Please let me know if you can hear it. Finders keepers. Did you hear that? Yes, yes, I can. Teacher. Yes, teacher. Thank you very much. Listen to Aaron and Leanne talking about finding something. Leanne. Are these statements true or false? Or does the person not say? Check the correct answer. One, Aaron. I was with my son at the supermarket. He was about eight years old at the time, and he found a wallet on the floor. Inside it was a hundred dollar bill. A hundred dollars. He picked it up and got all excited. In fact, neither of us could really believe it. He started talking about all the things he would buy, 
Right away I told him that we couldn't keep it. He seemed disappointed at first. We started asking people if they had lost anything. After asking around for a while, we hadn't found anyone, and I was beginning to think we'd asked everyone. But then, as we were walking to the front of the store, I noticed a man, actually my son noticed him, pacing back and forth, shaking his head and muttering something. I thought it was probably his wallet, so we asked him, and it was. My son felt better when he saw how relieved the man was about getting his money back. That was our good deed for the day, and the man gave my son $10 as a reward for returning the wallet. Always remember to keep your microphone off if you're not participating. Okay, the second one. Anne. I was on a train from Washington to New York last month when I found a book lying under my seat. It was so strange. It was just a little book, not an expensive one. It was probably only worth a few dollars. Well, I really wanted to read it. It was pretty interesting, and by the end of the trip, I was still reading it, so I decided to keep it. I took it home and finished it. Now, every time I see it on my bookshelf, I wonder if I should have taken it or not. I mean, do you think I should have returned it to the train conductor? Who knows? Like I said, it wasn't a very expensive book, so I didn't really feel guilty about taking it. Okay, um, question. Um, do you already have the answers or would you like to listen to the track one more time? One more time, teacher. One more time? All right. Okay, I'm playing the track one more time. Here we go. Finders Keepers. Listen to Aaron and Leanne talking about finding something. Are these statements true or false, or does the person not say? Check the correct answer. 1. Aaron I was with my son at the supermarket. He was about eight years old at the time, and he found a wallet on the floor. Inside it was a hundred dollar bill. A hundred dollars! He picked it up and got all excited. In fact, neither of us could really believe it. He started talking about all the things he would buy. Uh, right away I told him that we couldn't keep it. He seemed disappointed at first. We started asking people if they had lost anything. After asking around for a while, we hadn't found anyone, and I was beginning to think we'd asked everyone. But then, as we were walking to the front of the store, I noticed a man, actually my son noticed him, pacing back and forth shaking his head and muttering something. I thought it was probably his wallet, so we asked him, and it was. My son felt better when he saw how relieved the man was about getting his money back. That was our good deed for the day, and the man gave my son $10 as a reward for returning the wallet. Okay, so number one, Aaron's son wanted to keep the wallet and spend the money. Is that true, false, or it doesn't say. Alejandro, then Jenny, then Byron. Okay. It's true, teacher. The first one is true. Yeah, that's yes. correct. The first one is true. The son, the, the, the child wanted to keep the money. That is true. Thank you. Okay, Jenny Elizabeth, number two. Aaron's uh, son received a thank you card as a reward. Uh, no, it's false. It's false. Uh -huh. He what did, received $10. What, uh -huh, uh -huh. He received mm -hmm. $10 as a reward. Okay. Yeah. She's fine. Okay, thank you. I'm going to play the second part, then Byron and Noemi, maybe you can help me with the second part. Okay, so um, listen, please. Two, Leanne. I was on a train from Washington to New York last month when I found a book lying under my seat. It was so strange. It was just a little book, not an expensive one. It was probably only worth a few dollars. Well, I really wanted to read it. It was pretty interesting, and by the end of the trip, I was still reading it, so I decided to keep it. I took it home and finished it. Now, every time I see it on my bookshelf, I wonder if I should have taken it or not. I mean, do you think I should have returned it to the train conductor? Who knows? Like I said, it wasn't a very expensive book, so I didn't really feel guilty about taking it. All right. <clears throat> Byron, number three. The owner of the book probably didn't care much about it. 
doesn't say. It doesn't say. That is correct. She never mentions this. Okay, so it doesn't really say. And the last one, uh, someone was raising their hand, but number four, Leanne will probably return the book. What do you think? Is that true, false, or they didn't, she didn't mention it? False. Who said that? Noemi. Okay, false. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the end, she just kept the book, and it's on her bookshelf. Okay, she didn't say anything about returning the book. She doesn't seem to have any intentions to return the book. So it's false, totally. Thank you. So the answers are true, false, doesn't say, and false. You'll find the same exercise in the platform. This is exercise 3.3, okay? That's the end of that part. And now some vocabulary, okay? Um, let's do this. Lesson objective, this is 3.4. In this section, participants will be able to practice and use vocabulary to talk about ethics, okay? So what is that? Take a look. It's a little unethical, they say, unethical. What is unethical is the opposite of ethical, okay? These words describe people's ethics and attitudes, which prefixes give them the opposite meaning. You know what a prefix is, okay? We have studied this before. A prefix is like a, it's like a syllable sometimes one or two syllables, okay, mostly one syllable that you put at the beginning of a word to change its meaning. Often the prefix can give the opposite meaning of a word, okay? For example, you have acceptable. You have the word acceptable. If you add the prefix un, the word becomes unacceptable. What is the meaning of unacceptable? The opposite of acceptable, okay? You say these conditions are acceptable. Okay, good, you can work with it. But you say these conditions are unacceptable. That means no, 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 we can't work with it. So unacceptable becomes the opposite of acceptable. So what are we going to do right here? Okay, you have a chart with four different uh, uh, prefixes. The first one is this, the second one is ill, the next one is er, and the last one is un. Okay, so you need to classify the words in the yellow box, which is, we, you can hardly see it. Let me insert, uh, let's see, a box in here, because it's really hard to watch. Okay. Okay, that, okay, now you see it. Okay, there's this, you know, box in here and I want you to classify you know the words in the box into the four categories you know you have the first one acceptable you don't say this acceptable doesn't that doesn't exist or ill acceptable no you don't say irreceptable no the word is unacceptable okay you classify it right there I want you to continue with the other words I'm going to give you three minutes for this let's do it Classify the words according to the right prefix. You can check a dictionary if you want. No problem. Three minutes starting right now.
One minute. Time is up. So you have the first one, acceptable. The opposite word is unacceptable. What about agreeable? What about agreeable? Uh, Jenny Elizabeth, then Rufino Milka. Jenny. I think it's disagreeable. Disagreeable, that is correct. Okay, it's disagreeable. Disagreeable is something that people cannot agree. Okay, upon. So, uh, Rufino Amilcar, approving. It's the, it's the same, it's approving. Disapproving. Okay, that's correct. When somebody gives you a disapproving look, you do something and you look at a person and the person looks at you like this. Okay, they gave you a disapproving look. Okay, thank you. Alejandro Quintanilla, ethical. <laughs> Unethical? Unethical, yeah, it's very much in the title of the exercise but yeah it's unethical the opposite of ethical thank you alejandro uh what about the next one volunteer please who wants to try it boris salinas and then maritza fair unfair unfair okay injusto right so unfair that is correct thank you uh maritza honest dishonest Dishonest, that is correct, okay? Yeah, it's dishonest, very good. Byron, legal. Illegal. Illegal, okay, the word is illegal, that's right. Noemi, logical. Illogical. Illogical, that's right, okay, the word is illogical, good. The next one. Irrational. Who said that? Rosa, okay, thank you, Rosa. So, rational becomes irrational. Okay, yeah, that's right, it's irrational. Thank you very much. Um, what about responsible? Raise your hand if you want to participate, please. Noemi Alicia. Irresponsible. Irresponsible, okay, irresponsible. yeah, that's right. Irresponsible. Speaking of the word responsible and irresponsible, okay, uh, just make sure you spell it right okay so there is the word responsible and there is the word irresponsible okay so the thing is what i want you to notice is the i i'm telling you this because a lot of people misspell the word some people say responsible but the word responsible doesn't exist the word is responsible and it goes with an i Okay, the same thing with the opposite word, irresponsible. 
okay? And the thing, the same thing happens with, you know, derivative words like responsibility, okay? You don't say responsibility, that word doesn't exist. The word is responsibility, okay? So uh, then you have also the noun responsive. Well, responsive doesn't really go here, but yeah, just be careful with this, right? It's the, these words are spelled with an I, not with an A, okay? Be careful right there. So irresponsible, that is correct. Thank you very much. What about scrupulous? What about scrupulous? Sorry, I need to zoom out. What about scrupulous? Alejandro. Unscrupulous. Unscrupulous. Okay. Yeah. Which is inescrupulous, right? Unscrupulous. Dishonest, in other words. Okay. And the last one. Thank you, Alejandro. The last one. Trustworthy. Digno de confianza. You have trustworthy. That's literally the translation. Okay. Uh, Maritza. Uh, trustworthy. Untrustworthy. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, the word is untrustworthy. Que no es digno de confianza. That's the meaning of that. Untrustworthy. It's kind of a long word. Okay, but yeah, those are the ones. Okay, so with this, you have disagreeable, disapproving, and dishonest. With the, the, the suffix ill, you have illegal and illogical. Then with the suffix uh, ir, you have irrational and irresponsible. And with the suffix un, you have unacceptable unethical, unfair, unscrupulous, and untrustworthy, okay? So remember that the prefixes go specifically with specific words, okay? Sorry about being redundant, but uh, you cannot just combine them as you please. You cannot just say, for example, uh, irresponsible, that will be incorrect. So you say irresponsible, you don't say this logical, for example, the word doesn't exist, should be illogical. So you have to memorize what prefixes go with what words, okay? That's very important. It's part of the vocabulary that you need to know. Okay, uh, we're going to stop here, but just let me go through the attendance list one more time before we finish. Um, participants. Abdi Aviso Peña Lopez is here. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala is here. Ana Filomena Mendoza is here. Andrea Michel Garcia Selva is also here. And uh, Ana Yanira, sorry. Ana Yanira Mendoza is here. Okay, yes. Andrea Michel. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Andrea yeah. Michel Garcia Selva is here. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino is here. Boris Martin Salinas Quintanilla is here. It's actually connected through two devices. Okay, uh, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez is also here. Cesar Alexander Ramirez is here. Claudia Tiraeta is here. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos is here. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia is here. Gabriela Lourdes Sequeria Bernal is here. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez is also here. Claudia Simelda Sanchez is here. Janice Elizabeth Santiana Cortez is here. Jose Raivin Enriquez is here. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor is also here. Luis Fernando Enriquez Herrera is here. Madeline Diana Ceron de Paz is also here. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre is here. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva is here. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle is here. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura is here. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores is also here. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares is also here. Sandra Cecilia Munguía is not online tonight. Okay. All right, everybody, we're going to stop here. Remember to work on the platform, okay? Uh, I guess you're receiving some notifications on uh, the WhatsApp group. Remember to work on the platform, okay? No dejen que se les acumule, por favor, porque después surgen problemas si dejan que se acumule eso. Okay, so please, work on the platform. Tomorrow we're going to, fin no, wait, not tomorrow. T today's Tuesday, right? Yeah, today's Tuesday. No, tomorrow we're going to begin with the second part of section number three, okay? And then we finish uh, section number three on, on Thursday. Okay, we have a chat entry here. Uh, Debbie Segura is sending a message. Okay, I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Um, we're going to stop the class right now. So everybody, thank you very much. And I will see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Good night, everybody. Good night. See you tomorrow, teacher. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.